Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> NBC and Tums bring you the Fibber McGee and Molly program, transcribed, written by Phil Leslie, and directed by Max Huttle. <laughs> Fibber and Molly will be with you in a minute. When acid indigestion strikes, don't wait. Take Tums. Millions of Americans have turned to Tums for don't wait relief from acid indigestion. People in all walks of life carry Tums for record fast relief when some favorite food brings on acid indigestion or heartburn. Farmers in the field carry Tums for don't wait relief. They take Tums on the spot. There's nothing to mix, no waiting. Housewives, businessmen, everybody knows there's no more convenient, safer relief from acid indigestion. Tums go to work instantly to calm churning stomach acids. Just as important. Tums stop working the moment excess acid is neutralized. There's no acid rebound, just blessed relief. Always carry Tums in your pocket or purse and enjoy the don't wait relief of Tums. T-U-M-S, Tums for the tummy. Get handy pleasant Tums today and eat like candy. So economical, too. Only ten cents a roll everywhere. Things are fairly quiet at 79 Wistful Vista. The parakeet in his cage on the piano says... And Mr. McGee looks up from his work to say... Quiet, Buster. I'm typewriting out a speech. How can I concentrate if you keep interrupting? Uh, Let me see what I got here. Friends, executives, and gentlemen. I... Oh, doggone it, another mistake. Well, how's the speech coming along, McGee? Kind of slow, Molly, kind of slow. Writing a speech is hard work, especially when you can only type with one finger, my thumb. Well, now, you'll make it, dearie. Just imagine my husband making a speech to the richest men in this town and telling them how to be a success. Ah, yes, it will be quite a moment. Just picture me sitting up there at the speaker's table, looking down at all them upturned faces full of mashed potatoes. (laughs) <laughs> it's quite a picture. I'd like to see that in 3D. When I polish off my fried chicken, push aside my plate, lay down a drumstick and stand up, you'll be able to hear a gizzard drop. I hope it isn't yours. Fellow big shots, I'm going to say. That's a modest opening. Fellow big shots, I stand before you today to view with alarm the reactionary trend of inflation which disseminates from the economic structure of this great republic of ours. What does that mean? I don't know, but don't it sound impressive? <laughs> I better write that down before I forget it. Now, see, what, what did I say? You know what I said? What did I say? No, but even if I could remember every word, we couldn't spell them anyway. Start over. Okay. Now, uh, every time I start something important... Come in! Oh, it's Mr. Wimple. Hello there. Oh, hi, Wimp. Hello, folks. I just left Kramer's drugstore, and they asked me to drop off this typewriter paper you ordered, Mr. McGee. Oh, thanks, Wimp. Sit down for a minute. Thank you. I can't stay, really. Sweetie Face is... Say, how is Mrs. Wimple these days, anyway? Well, is she? Oh, yes. She's fine. She was out of town, and I had the whole day to myself yesterday, but I didn't go anywhere. I just spent the day hanging around the house. Hanging around the house, huh? Yes. She didn't want me to get in trouble, so she hung me up on a coat hook. (laughs) That seems a little unreasonable, Mr. Wimple. Well, she can be awfully stubborn sometimes, Mrs. McGee. Stubborn, huh? Like this morning, for instance. Just because I forgot to put starch in her gin blouse this morning, she went on a sit-down strike. (laughs) She even refused to get up to answer the telephone. It just rang and rang and rang and rang. Why didn't you answer it, Wimp? It was me she was sitting on. Oh, Oh, (laughs) but I got even with her, though. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, what'd you do? I dumped a goldfish bowl over my head. That made her mad. How come? She likes to do that. <laughs> well, I've got to go now. I bought Sweetie Face a little peace offering to smooth things over, and I want to surprise her with it. What is it? A chin strap. A chin strap? Yes. <laughs> it's the only way I'll ever do it, I guess. Do what? Give her a belt in the jaw. <laughs> Goodbye now. So long, Wallace. Well, now, 
Now, if people leave me alone a while, I'll get back on this speech. I'll leave you, B. I've got things to do. Hey, wait a minute, Molly. Have you seen the dictionary anyplace? You know, the one I bought that time Doc Gamble gave me the dough to pay his water bill and I forgot to, and they turned it off in the middle of his shower and he had his face full of soap suds and fell down the stairs and I had to buy a dictionary to look up what he called me. You seen it? Seen what? The dictionary. It was about the size of this book here and... Oh, I know where it is. It's in the hall closet, so hand me the phone. The phone? I'll order a new one. Hello, operator. Give me the book nook at the corner of 14th and... Oh, my gosh, is that you, Mert? Oh, dear. Well, how's every little thing, Mert? It is, eh? What's say, Mert? Your kid brother that joined the Air Force. How'd he make out? Oh, washed him out, eh? The poor lad flunked his training, did he? No, he came home from the base with some new words he learned, and his mother propped his mouth open and washed him out with soap. Hmm? Yeah, Mert, the book nook. Yeah, 14th and open. I want to order a dictionary because I'm writing a speech. <laughs> There's more fun with the McGee's shortly. Most of us have been called away from home and loved ones at one time or another. And we know from the experience that there's nothing quite as important during those days of separation as mail. A good old letter from home. Any man or woman in the armed forces will tell you the only call that takes precedence over mess is mail call. And when a letter is more important to a hungry G.I. than food, you know it means something. The truce in Korea doesn't mean we should stop writing letters to our men and women in service, whether in U.S. camps or overseas. Mail from home is just as important now as it ever was. Yes, in some respects, it's even more important. The action, the strain, the anxieties of war can keep a soldier's mind occupied. But when the letdown comes, the time to relax, that's when morale needs a shot in the arm. Your soldier knows the shooting is over. He's done his big job, and now he wants to get home. But unfortunately, there's still a lot to keep him for a while. So don't let him down. Help keep up his morale. Write that letter today. McGee, I'm home. Okay. I just got back from the grocery store. You still working on that same speech? Yep. You can't rush genius, my dear. These things take time. How's the speech coming along? Not bad, Molly, not bad at all. Oh, it's going to be a terrific oration when I get it finished. Read what you have so far. I'm dying to hear it. Go on, read it. Well, it's kind of rough so far, but why don't you wait till I get it rewrote and polished? Go on, go on. I'm too impatient. Let's hear it so far. Okay, but remember, it's a little rough in spots. <clears throat> Fellow executives, brother businessmen, and gents, I stand before you today... Yes? All right. Well, that's all i got wrote so far. rest of it's in my head, though. You mean three hours of typing produced just that? Well, I'm kind of out of practice spelling words anyhow, I guess. I seem to forgot all I ever learned at grade school. That's a shame. Yeah. You spent so much time there, too. Yeah. I remember how tickled my folks were, though, when I got out. I graduated with high honors, you know. I don't remember that. Oh, sure you do. Hiram Honors, that tall, skinny kid that used to help the butcher on Saturdays. Oh, yeah. Remember that tough neighborhood he used to live in? <laughs> they called him Skinny on account of because he was the only kid on the block who had any skin. Wasn't he the lad whose father got arrested for shopping at night after the stores closed? That's the one. <laughs> yeah, but I can't stand here gabbing all day. i got to get back to work. Okay. Okay, I'm going. Dinner will be ready at six. Fine. Now, let's see. That gives me three full hours. All right, Elsie, let's go. Elsie who? Elsie Smith, my typewriter. time to visit with you now. I'm writing a speech, and I... Oh, boy. Can I watch your typewriter, mister? Hmm, can I watch your typewriter? Hmm, can I? Hmm? No. No, I'm too busy. Oh, okay. Sit mm, there. Goody. <laughs> That's poor. I watch Mr. Corey write, I betcha. Mm. He writes books. He lets me watch him. All right, all right. But keep quiet, will you? Okay. <laughs> we of big business... Have a responsible... Hey, hey, watch the paper, mister. Watch the paper. You're going to write off the end of it. Watch it. See there? I told you. Bell rang. Okay, okay. Now pipe down, will you, Teeny? Okay. Now, where was I? Oh, I was... That's what Mr. Curry always says. <laughs> pipe down, what he always says. Yeah, well, I don't blame him. 
In dealing with the common people, we big business. M E N. Hey, ring the bell again, Mister. Will you? Mister Curry always makes the bell ring. Oh, but, now, look, Teeny. That's what Mister Curry always mm. says. He always says, "Look, Teeny." He always says. Here. Here, take this two-bit piece and go down to Kramer's drugstore and buy yourself a buy yourself a soda with a slow straw. Mister Curry always says, "Take this fifty cents." Okay, okay, okay. Here, take a buck. Now beat it, will you? Oh boy, thanks, Mister. You're awful nice to little children. Oh, sure. Hey, Willie, it worked. It worked again, just like with Mister Curry. Come on, Willie. Dead redded fresh kid. Well, now maybe I can see. In this fair city. There. That does it. Huh. Finished at last. Hey, Molly, I got it. I got it. Heavenly days, McGee. What's all the excitement about? Well, the speech. It's finished. Let me tell you, kiddo, it's a beaut. Boy, are you going to be proud of your old man. Wonderful. Go on, read it to me. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> Fellow executives, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, now, who can that be? I'll get it. Hello. Yes, it is. This is Mrs. McGee speaking. Would you mind repeating that, please? What is it, Molly? Yes. Yes, I'll tell him. Dead. Goodbye. Kid, I suppose, Hey, Molly, you, you look so strange. What's the matter? Well, I, I don't know how to tell you this, McGee, but that was the executive club president. Yeah? Well, business has been so bad they just can't afford the luncheon. Mm. The whole thing has been called off. Called off? What? Why, they can't do that to me after all the time I spent writing this. My time is valuable. Why, I'll sue them. What do they mean they can't afford it after I spent all the time... <laughs> Good night to Fibber and Molly in a moment. Here's a reminder about some of the wonderful entertainment that's yours for the listening each Wednesday evening on the NBC radio network. There's comedy for everyone when you set your dial to NBC for such stellar broadcasts as You Bet Your Life with Groucho Marx and The Great Gildersleeve starring Willard Waterman. Gildersleeve is the water commissioner of Summerfield and he's always managing to get himself into hot water with Bertie, Leroy, and the Jolly Boys. You'll find that The Great Gildersleeve Provides 30 minutes of top-flight entertainment that your whole family will enjoy. Then when it's time for Groucho Marx, watch out. Groucho throws a mean ad lib, and there's a barb at the end of every one of them. Listen and laugh as this Marx man trades quips with his contestants from the studio audience. It's a riot of fun from top to bottom when Groucho Marx plays You Bet Your Life. Also on Wednesdays, listen to more quiz fun on Walk a Mile with your genial quiz master, Bill Cullen. Walk a Mile is a new type quiz with each contestant competing for big cash prizes. You'll enjoy Walk a Mile every Wednesday night on the NBC Radio Network. Well, don't feel so badly, sweetheart. Maybe somebody else will ask you to make a speech. Maybe the executives' club will even change their mind and decide to have the luncheon after all. Well, don't just sit there. Say something. Good night. Good night, all. <laughs> NBC and Tums have brought you the Fibber McGee and Molly program transcribed with Bill Thompson as Wallace Wimple in the part of Teeny played by Teeny. This is John Wald inviting you to be with us again tomorrow night for another visit with Fibber McGee and Molly. Just for laughs, here, can you top this tonight on the NBC radio network?